it's hard to celebrate somebody. Like, why would you celebrate? You know, but it's not that you're celebrating. It's a weird thing. Grief is such a weird thing, you know, Mm because once you accept it, you're like, you know what? I've accepted this. This happened. Now I can move on with my life. But you don't forget those memories of your loved one. You, You celebrate them. Well, Eric, thank you for being here, man. Happy to be here. Of course, we're live without being live. So um, I appreciate you taking the track out here, reaching out, and uh, to share your story. I'm really happy to be here. Thank of you. Of course, for yeah. No, it's uh, like I said, it's, it, this podcast is connecting to so many people that I probably would have never met, and it's cool that you connected with or found me through Tay. She's yeah. phenomenal. Shout out Tay. Shout out Tay. And uh, yeah, let's get the ball rolling. Thank you guys for tuning into another episode. As usual, uh, we have a new friend of mine, Eric G, sitting across from me with two of his homies, including the manager. And, Angel, uh, Adrian, shout out Adrian, shout out Angel. And we got a, if you're watching on YouTube, you might have a right arm on the right side of the screen. You can give a little wave. There you go. All right, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna hear a story from Eric. He uh, he told me that he lost his mom. He said five years ago, or it's about yeah, it's about four or five years ago. 2017. 2017. Right. Got it. And what? Uh, so what took place? What happened to her? So uh, dang. So I, it's you know what's funny? Like I don't really revisit that quite often and you know i go to therapy a lot you know so i feel like my therapist always tells me too you know hey you know you should talk about it more and i don't and maybe that's the reason why because people have different ways of grieving and stuff like that but um for me if i can think back to that hard year you know i i was 20 when she passed away i'm 25 now but my mom's always been like she she had a disease called scleroderma, which is like an autoimmune disease, skin disease. Very rare. Only actually more common in women than men. Um, but she's had it for like like 20 years. And the doctor only gave her like five years when she had me in her stomach. So um, I was blessed to have gotten like 20 years with her, you know. Uh, but other than that, yeah, like she had this disease and it was always in and out of the hospital for her. And it it just it was it was hard for her you know growing up i didn't really know as a kid i didn't know what was going on uh i always seen all the medication she was always in and out of the hospital like i said but it didn't start to click with me until i turned like 13 14 is when i'm like man like my mom's like really sick you know this is not normal for for a kid to be having their mom in and out of the hospital like that and i feel like that's why like i'm still affected by that today you know uh i struggle with like really crippling anxiety because I was always so worried about like my mom is she gonna be in the hospital today I don't know I don't know you're saying that the plan applies to every area of your life or? yeah like yeah. growing up just having because like I said I was a kid so I didn't really know what was happening to me mm-hmm. the impact of her being sick and and, and dealing with that so I, I didn't know I was a kid of course but um yeah so she had a, a autoimmune disease skin disease but it was always externally right and it made her her skin very very hard on the on the outside and uh like I said, it's a very rare disease. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, I think one celebrity did have it or their mom had it. It was John Stamos with, from like Full House. Mm. Uh, before my time, for sure. But, had it? Like he doesn't... It's- uh, he was like one of the males mm. celebrities that, that had it. I think I think it was him or his mom. I don't know. One, one of... I know it, it was in his family. Right. But my mom... Um, would have like these yearly like scleroderma. It was called scleroderma. So they'll have like scleroderma walks, walkathons, uh, just to like bring awareness, you know, the breast can- breast cancer awareness month, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I dealt with that for, for a long time. And like I said, I didn't really know what, what it was until growing up. But eventually it got internally, the, the hardening of her skin, it started to harden her lungs and it made it like really, really hard for her to breathe. So it, it had other complications, like um, I believe it was called, what was it called? Hyper, uh, hypertension of the lungs. There's another word before that, but it's po- pulmonary hypertension. It, what, what, that's what the name was. Okay. And um, eventually it just got really hard for her to breathe. Like if she were to walk from here to your bathroom, she would be like out of breath. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, so that past year, like from, Early 2017 uh, or late 2016, I just kind of noticed her declining more and more. But I didn't think anything of it because I always thought like, oh, my mom's been through worse. Like she'll come back. She's been in the hospital. She'll, she'll, she'll bounce back from this. 
But um, I guess, I, I don't know, I guess it just really got bad and um, it, yeah, that, that whole early 2017, cause she passed away November 17, 2017. And um, it just, one thing after another, after another, it just, she couldn't breathe that much. She needed like the oxygen mask, like the whole time to the point I remember like uh, my, it was my sister and my other, my sister, Lori, my sister, Renee, they sat us down with like the doctor and it was such a weird conversation to have somebody like, like one of the medical professionals come up to you and be like, Hey, there's like nothing we can do anymore. You know? Mm. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like you're, you're a doctor, you know, you, you're supposed to like, you're supposed to try whatever you can. Like we've tried whatever we can already. And unfortunately, like there's really, it's either something to put her through, um, more suffering, which we didn't want or comfort care, which is like letting them go like, you know, peacefully, peacefully. So we like thought about it, me, my sister and my other sister, like in the room for like literally like two days straight. We didn't leave the hospital. We're just like, what do we do? That's a, that's a big thing to put on somebody, you know, us three, like we just didn't know, like somebody's life is in our hands, our, our mother, you know? So we're like, what do we do? Like, well, we don't want our mom to, su to suffer. Like, what do we, what would she want? What would she want? Cause at that point my mom was like incoherent and she couldn't even really like talk that much. So I remember like, I, I just kind of just stood, I'm like my older sister, I'm like, Laurie, like whatever you want to do, like mom told you everything, you know, she wanted, she told you what she, her plans were, her wishes. So I just want to honor that. So yeah, that, the, that whole week was like the hardest. I didn't get no sleep. <clears throat> I, I remember man, like that shit. Mess me up. My bad if I'm going off a tangent right now. I'm just, no, no, that's why we're on a podcast. I'm trying to like reminisce and like think about like, damn, I remember like how I felt. Like it was, yeah, it was no, bad. No tangents. This is this is how it's supposed to go. So uh, say it as it comes out. We want this to be as real as possible. And you're doing that. So you, she said she said uh, you, the doctor told her by the time you were born she was given five years to live. Yeah, yeah. So. But did they tell? At what point did you real, did you learn of that? Like through this process? When, when I was older, yeah. When I got older, my my uh, sister and my mom like you know the doctor only gave your mom like five years to live when you were in her stomach, right? I was like, really? Like, wow, you know, she surpassed that like what fifteen years later. So that's why the whole part of me growing up and learning about all that, I was just I took a step back, and it sucks that it was already kind of like towards the end of her life where I realized like oh shit like. Uh, maybe I should have like cherished these moments a little more. And that's what messes me up the most. And that's why I tell all my friends, all my family that have their mom and their dad still, I'm like, cherish your parents, man, because uh, you don't realize what you have until it's gone. And like, that's so cliche to say, but it's so true. Now I call my dad every day, every day I call my dad just to check up on him, just to be like, hey dad, what are you doing? Okay, all right. But even if it's like a two minute conversation, I call him because like, if you think about it like that, that's like my only parent I have left, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And like that, in a way it hurts me, but it, it just made me realize that, you know, you got to cherish your loved ones for sure, you know? Yeah. I think that's, uh, if there's anything anyone's going to get out of, I mean, there's, we still have so much more to talk about, but that is an immediate lesson that I've, I, I'm with you on that. I think a lot of people that lose someone make that realization. It's easy to look back. Oh, I should have, could have, would have. Sometimes it, it takes that, unfortunately, to make those realizations. And by you telling people through your experience, you know, it hopefully gets in the ears of people to make that realization before it's too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I feel like there is that innate guilt of, you know, when you when you lose someone and then you think back, oh, I could, but you didn't, it's just a different perspective. You don't, you don't know. Yeah. You yeah, know, I, 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 th I thought about that all the time because there's been times where like, dude, I was growing up, you know, I was a teenager. And there's been times where like, I just wanted to go hang out with friends and stuff. And like, now I beat myself up. Like, why didn't I not, like spend more time with my mom? But like, I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah. Have you, you let, have, you, have you let that go at all? You, you know what? And I'm saying this right here. Like not even my friends have like even have heard this before from me, but I feel like I haven't fully grieved yet. It's been five years, four or five years that, that it, that since she's passed, I went through every single step of the grieving process, but I think the one last thing that I haven't overcame and you probably would know already is acceptance. I have not accepted it just because I remember my therapist telling me, she's like, 
we should talk about more of you, like your mom at these sessions. Cause usually when I check in with my therapist, it's usually like, how was your week? You know? And I tell mm-hmm. her whatever happened that week. Um, but she told me, she's like, we should like dive in really about, about your mom. Cause I don't feel like you fully, like you fully grieved about that. I don't think I have either. She's like, let me ask you like when her birthday comes around or like holidays, do you celebrate like her, her life? Do you celebrate it or do you get sad and depressed and like cry? I'm like, yeah, I do. I get sad, depressed and cry. And I'm trying to learn that balance. Like it's hard to celebrate somebody. Like, why would you celebrate? You know, but it's not that you're celebrating. It's a weird thing. Grief is such a weird thing, you know, because mm-hmm. you, once you accept it, you're like, you know what? I've accepted this. This happened. Now I can move on with my life, but you don't forget those memories of your loved one. You you celebrate them as their memories. You know, mm-hmm. I remember you know, my mom used to like this or my mom used to like Coke. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like Or squirt. Or squirt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my mom like ribs too. Is that another weird drink that I don't know about or actual ribs? No, ribs. Okay, like okay. food, like food. <laughs> to preface what I just said, I, he, uh, we asked him what drinks he wanted before coming here and he said as a chaser for the tequila that, do you mind if I ask you to pour me a little bit? Of, so I don't, like, if I give you my glass. Sorry, everyone. We're taking a tequila break. But I asked him what chaser he wanted. He said squirt. I didn't, so if anyone listening, I, don't, I didn't know what the fuck squirt was. But, I'm uh, like, bro, come on. Yeah, and I, 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 and Jesus, I told him, I was like, you, <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't that much. I'm just a pussy. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> What the hell were we talking about? Yeah, no, do, well, yeah, my yeah, question yeah. was was going to be like, what do you consider fully like? What is fully grieved? Because I, I don't, I don't know that in my head. I don't know it is like acceptance. Is that the end? I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like there's the stages of grief everyone talks about, but sometimes like another guy I talked about. Um, I'm trying to fuck. I'm trying to think which guest it was. Um, one of my. You had a little Zan on this podcast, huh? Yeah, Zan was on here. When was that? That was I seen that one on maybe like two months ago. Wow, it's been a little bit now. Maybe a that's month dope. Now. That's dope. Yeah, you know he's 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 been through it, and it was cool to share that space with him. He, um, you know, he said some he said some good things. So it was, awesome. it was cool to speak to him. That's dope. Um, but in regards to like the fully grieving process, I spoke to someone that was like, you know, they have the stages of grief that you mentioned, but sometimes it comes in all wacky orders. Like sometimes mm. you, I, I don't know, I don't know if it comes in that specific order, or even if anyone said that. But like, is are you, so? Are you seeing acceptance as that final stage? For for me, yeah. Okay. I feel like I went through the, the depression, the um, bargaining, right? You know, like why why couldn't it have been me? You know, um, I'm lo- I'm losing track. I know there's like other ones, but um, yeah. I feel like acceptance is that last one on the list, and that's the one that I just can't wrap my head around yet. So, with the lack of accepting, do you, does that have like ancillary feelings, or do you feel angry or guilt? Like, what is there other feelings that come with that? Like, when you don't feel like you accept it, what is it that what is going on inside? I do feel guilty a little bit. Like I, I right. wish going back to like, I wish I would have spent more time or, but then like, like you said, you know, I didn't know. I and that's didn't. part of the acceptance too. It's not just accepting, maybe you know, you're probably sure you know this, but it's like not just accepting the death. It's accepting those parts too. Yeah. It's, it's accepting everything that kind of contributed to mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess that's like my last, my last step. And if anybody that could draw any, um, you know, relate, if they can relate to this in any certain way, it's that I'm like proof of like, there is no timeline on how somebody can grieve or how long it takes. It's been like five years and I'm, I'm still going through it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people take even longer than that. Some people don't ever get to a point where they could have been, I I have friends, mothers that I've seen that just never never quite got over it and their lifestyle never changed so they just kept themselves and I, I, I spoke to a guy uh, I brought him up so many times because he wrote one of my favorite books Bruce Lipton and he he had this analogy of kind of like we're carrying this baggage this like luggage of grief and it, sometimes you just gotta put it down it doesn't, and it doesn't mean you forget this person it doesn't mean you don't celebrate them it doesn't mean you're always like you're fully healed per se because I don't know what even that means but it is, it's like that letting go is part of that acceptance. And I try to apply, like I've accepted my, what happened with me and my family, but then there's other aspects of shit that I go through that I'm dealing with now that I'm still having a hard time accepting when I thought I was one that could easily accept things. I accept it, but I don't, I don't know. It's that, my weird way of getting over it, I just like look up and I kind of laugh and I force myself to laugh because I don't fucking know what we're doing here. <laughs> like in a really like hippie stoner thing of saying, I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know what no one, what the hell is all this shit like, it, like we don't it's, what is life what is life and it seems so it's just so ridiculous that there's so many things I've gone through in life that I thought were the most crazy things and it ended up not being as bad as it was or as serious as it was and I just like look up in the cosmos and I'm just like 
God damn, we're small. Like, this is, a, like, this is what this is what it is. And we're what, on a what floating gonna, rock in space. If a, you think about it, yeah. Like, how many but, other floating rocks are there? <laughs> freak, but it freaks me out. I guess so. Like, I can't like sweating right now. I'm just tequila over the topic. But <laughs> it's just I don't even know what I was going with that. But it's just I, I my like I said earlier, my coping mechanism is laughing. And sometimes when I get too into my head with whatever I'm dealing with, I'm just like, look at me. I'm like, I just laughing. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. And that's yeah. it. Like, I, sometimes I think that's my way of accepting. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling the right thing. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And that's it. It's okay. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. fucking know. And, yeah. and the one thing that we do know is that life goes on. That's it. That's like the one thing I can say. Like, life does go on, but it's hard to go on with these things in our minds. And I don't know how you got to accept it or what it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe listen to more dead talks and more people. But yeah, for real. I don't know. If, if, you, if you really think that's the last step, then. You just got to claw at it. Yeah, no, for sure. I feel like um, there's there's different, you know, emotions and, and waves of things that I felt during th these past couple of years. But, uh, you know, I always say there's two things you can control in life, right? There's a thing that you... Hold on, let me share. I say this, right? <laughs> hey, man, we got time. There's things in life that you can control and there's things in life that you can't control. But the things in life that you can control or the things that happen after the things that you couldn't control, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. So I could have, when my mom passed away, like, okay, you know, I'm just going to go down this rabbit hole and do drugs, alcohol, just fuck up my life, you know, mess up my life and just ruin it. But I was like, you know what? Like, nah, like my mom raised me to be, uh, you know, a young man that that is responsible and this and that. You, don't get me wrong. Like I've had my, my fuck up moments and stuff, but... um. I just could have took two different avenues with that. Yep. And I feel like the thing that I struggle with and a lot of people tell me is alcohol. And I do use that as a as a coping thing sometimes, but I'm starting to realize now that it's uh like I can differentiate differentiate like okay, I'm drinking because I feel sad or I'm drinking because I'm having a good time. Mm. And now I'm at this place where I could see that now yeah. and not fall down that that hole of like oh man, you know. Because I, I, I have, you know, family traits of addiction and stuff. So, yeah. I feel like an asshole buying you the bottle. No, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. No, but that's, I mean, that dude, you're fucking 25. That's a, um, that's a, a really big, it's a really big critical moment of awareness to be able to say that at 25. I'm just letting you know that right there. Is it? Yeah. Because I was, I was literally having a conversation with you at, the, at, at, with Adrian at the gym and I'm like, we're working out and I said something, I'm like, bro, we're in our late, I'm like, wait, I mean, mid twenties, like, don't say that. Don't say yeah. that. We were still so young, you know, like, I don't know. Growing up is crazy too. Like, that's a whole nother thing. Like time is like going, time is going. Yeah. It's tough for me to say, I'm not, maybe I'm backtracking on what I said, but like the, uh, like the age is, it's just an, I hate to say it, but it is sometimes just a number because we have life experiences at different times that make you grow up quicker sometimes. So I like, agree. I mean, listen, a lot of times if someone says a certain age, like, okay, a lot, sometimes it's mostly right. You're young and naive, which, but it just, I think that naiveness dissipates with experience. And when you have an experience like you had at 20, like you said, you had one, you can go left, you can go right. And it seems like you're choosing one way, but it's still, it's not, even when you make these decisions that are going to better your life, you're still going to have those battles throughout the way. You're silent. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whether it's drinking, you like, you think you're over the hump then you might be triggered and you want to easily go back. I, I have no problem with people drinking, do whatever they got to do to escape. I just think it's important not to fall into it, and not to do it all the time to forever for like always yeah. escape because you got to, yeah. it's going to catch up one way or another. And if it doesn't catch up, then you're going to be in a black hole of whatever you're indulging in. So it's like, you got to, you really do got to face it when you're going through it. And I, I think facing it sounds weird, but I think it's just letting yourself feel it. Like letting yourself, my head, the way I say is like, if you feel like shit, mm. feel like shit. Feel it. Fucking yeah. go. It's like, I've never had to go through withdrawal with drugs, thankfully, or anything like that. So I can't mm. relate. But from my layman's term of understanding that, you know, when you go through withdrawal, you have this horrible few days, whatever it is, of cold sweats and vomiting, whatever. Mm. Sorry if I'm butchering that, but you go through that withdrawal. I think when you're going, when you feel shit, you just got to fucking feel shitty and you're gonna, your mind's going to be racing, but you go, you really go through it. And yeah. then you do come out the other side little by little. And I think that's part of grief or whatever the hell we're going through. I think that's the most important thing is to feel it. Because for the longest, like it. I said, when she passed away, I was just like, I just couldn't accept it. So I would do other things, whether that be not only just alcohol, women, that's a whole other thing too. You know, like you do these things to just put a Band-Aid over, you know, 
mm. the the cut and stuff like that. But I felt like I was doing that a lot to the point when I turned 24, 25 is when I realized like, damn, like I really need to face this because if I don't, I'm going to be 35 dealing with this still. It's really never going to go away. And I've, I've heard people, you know, backstory on me, like I, it's funny, I work at Kaiser. I work at, in psychiatry. So I get a lot of calls all the time of people that deal with anxiety, depression, suicide thoughts, and schizophrenia, like everything, everything, you know, that's like my day job. It's like my first, maybe, a, maybe we can cut that out. That's amazing. No, that's fucking brilliant. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I'm so, like, I mean, listen, if you want, if, if, I'll remove whatever the hell you want, but <laughs> I think that's brilliant. That's, that's nothing, there's nothing to hide behind that. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So I, I guess we can keep this in. Uh, I work in psychiatry at Kaiser. Um, but that's like my day job. But I also, you know, do music. And that's my, my music is like my main thing I feel that has kept me going and alive this whole time. Like there's no feeling in the world other than like music that really, really makes me feel complete and happy. And I feel like that's anybody's passion, whether if it be like painting or filming or whatever it is. For me, it's music and I, I realized over the years, I'm like, damn, like, I just love this. Like, mm. this is something that has helped me. And I'm fortunate enough to have a passion like that because some people are growing up 25, 30, 35 that haven't found that yet. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. Some people don't find it till they're in their 40s or whatever. But I'm fortunate enough to have found that, you know, key to navigate my life and mm. use that to fuel me, you know? And how has your experience losing your mom fueled your music? Because I feel like creatively that, you know, a lot of dark shit comes from, mm. like in the art world, I feel like it comes from trauma, comes from life experiences. Yeah. And you've gone through the ringer with that. So how, how has that played a role in your artistic creativity? I feel like it's played a huge role, actually, you know? Um, when she passed away, like the first thing, like, you know, I, I was going through all these emotions, but I'm like, I, I want to make a song about her, about this, you know? So I have a song that I may call Paradise. It's about my mom, like, ascending to heaven, paradise, you know? And um, ever since then, every I'm, I'm working on an EP right now, currently, and I really, really want this EP to touch more on my mom's passing because I feel like I talked about it on, like, one song or, like, a couple, but, but not enough. So I really want to just get that off my chest, and I feel like I use the music, the art, to get everything I'm feeling off my chest. Because sometimes I can't always vent everything I feel to my therapist or to my friends or whatever. It's just music is my avenue to to do that, for sure. That's fantastic. And when, when's the EP dropping? Hopefully, beginning of the year, 2023. How many songs do you know yet? Seven. Do you have a, do you have a name? I don't have a name yet. Usually, it all comes to me like the last month. I have all the songs together. Like, I just... Uh, filmed a song or a music video. It's called Excuses. It's about like my past relationship of what I went through, how many excuses I've made, the cheating, the lies, everything. And uh, this this album I or this EP, I really want it to be something that I've never been so vulnerable on. You know what I'm saying? Like something super, super like just me, you know, yeah. not having a mask on. There's an artist that you should listen to Amazing. I actually went to his album release party recently. His name is Rex Life Raj. Re Shout out Rex Life Raj. He is my favorite artist. He just dropped an album recently too about grief, which is crazy because he lost his mom. And then like a few months later, he lost his dad. Jesus. And he, uh, he in the songs, he's like explaining like I had a couple months to grieve about my mom and then my dad passed right after. And it's just, um, dude, his music is just so amazing. I love it. He's like my biggest inspiration for real. Like, and he just lets everyone into him. And yeah, his yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I recommend you listen to his his album. It's called The Blue Hour. It's amazing. And is it dedicated? To, is it dedicated very to his mom? Heavy and, related to the, yes, yeah, yes. So uh, the first song I listened to, it came out literally like like last month. First song I listened to, I'm not gonna lie. I played the album. I was in my car. I started crying, bro. I start, I'm not even lying to you. I, I put it on and I, but crying because I'm like smiling, like, wow, like I, I feel this, yeah. you know, like everything he's saying, like, and it just inspired me to like, I want to make more music like this. Like, and it, there's nothing wrong with being yourself and making music about what you feel and stuff. No, if anything, I feel like the, my, 
I'm like, I'm not a music, I'm not a musician or an artist, but I'm into music and the songs and artists that I've connected to the most are letting us into that world. And yeah. Cause you're going to connect with people. And a beautiful thing in my head of like with music and lyrics, someone might have intentions behind the lyrics of a song, but in the ears of the listener, they still can interpret it their own way in poetry. It's like when someone has an intention, what the story is, you ask the artist or the writer what your what the lyrics are about, but then the listener may still interpret it their own way, even though that was the intention. So the way you write your music, as long as it's coming out real, it could connect to so many people. And that's the beautiful thing about art and music. So I think, I mean, your manager's over there, so you can, don't let me tell you, but you can <laughs> Shout out let, that, let that shit out, man. Let that shit out. And that's why we're here today in regards to talking about this. Um, so so where, where are you right now with what you've gone through? You, I know you kind of, broke into a little about the acceptance part like what in your head what is the route to getting to acceptance it's a great question thank I you I, I work on this anybody has ever asked me that in an interview or podcast first time here on dead talks first question <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah i feel like where i'm at right now mentally like i feel like the transition from 24 to 25 is huge for me i don't know what it was there's just like a switch that went off in my head but right now where I'm at, I'm trying to not only accept like my mom's grief and be like, okay, this happened, you know, because my mom was like my best friend for real. Like she was everything to me, super close to her. So I, I'm trying to do a better job of accepting it and celebrating, you know, her life and, and everything that she went through and, and to have me and to raise me to the man I am today, uh, do a better job of accepting that. And also accepting the mistakes I made in my past. Like, I feel like that's really uh, has had a hold on me. Not only like not being there for my mom and stuff like that, but, you know, we all we all have grown and made mistakes, you know? We're, it's part of growing up. Actually, we are. It's part of growing up. So I'm at the place right now to learn how to love myself more because I, I, I don't really do that enough. So I'm in the process of loving myself more and looking myself in the mirror and be like, you know what? What happened in the past doesn't define me anymore. As long as you have remorse for the past and everything like that, and you're just trying to be a better person, I think that's what keeps me going as well. Not only the music, but just having that mentality and just pushing, moving forward. Amen, you know? man. We got to love ourselves before we love anyone else. Let me throw a, a hypothetical at you. Because from, from what I'm hearing, it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, which I don't think I am, it, you had a great relationship with your mom. Was, yeah. it, was it a loving relationship? Oh, yeah, for sure. So my thought to you is if you had an opportunity, if you could hear your mom's voice right now and she literally, like, if she said to you or how she would say to you, I guess, would she not tell you it's, to, it's okay? Yeah. Would she not tell you that it's all good? Would she not tell you everything you've done before that you're hanging your head on, it's all good? She Not that she needs to forgive you, but she's like, you're, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not here, but I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. And you're good. I feel like if, if I, my mentality in this situation is like I lost my dad or if I lost my mom, I did lose my dad. And if I lost my mom, knowing my mom so well as I'm sure you did, I know she would not – I'm blessed to have that. Like, And I think likewise, I was blessed to have a loving father. I, was, I am still blessed to have a loving mother. I just know when the day comes that that happened. And even though I have been through this, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to react. I'm going to be horribly sad. But when I think about my mom's voice, I know she would say, David, shut the fuck up. Keep going. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like – if your mom were to speak to you today without knowing anything about her, it's like she would tell you right now, look in your eyes, say, don't, just let it go. It's all good. Yeah. There's nothing. I'm not holding anything back with you mm. in the moment. This is what we knew and now we know this now. Mm. So I feel like if you kind of have those conversations with your mom as if she was with you right now, yeah. I feel like you know she would tell you herself that it's okay. 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like, like that's how I think about things sometimes and – I don't know. How, it's like you can still talk to your mom in a weird way. Not that happens, not the same, but like, you know, you could have those conversations yeah. that you know her so well that you know you had a loving relationship. So you know she would tell you, don't, have, you didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Even if you did, it's in the past, like you said. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, your mom would tell you, just continue doing your thing and let it go and accept this because it is what for it is. Sure. You know what I mean? So for it's sure, like, for sure. I don't know if that made any sense. Does that make any sense, to everyone? It did. We get over there. I have yes, man. Right, right, cool. like, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I need somebody to say no. So like, don't put me in my place. But no, I'm just like you know what I mean. You have, if you, it, when you're in a situation, you're blessed to have those loving relationships. Like I've heard from multiple people that have gone through loss, they they have they have meaning continue on because like I know this person I lost would not want me to be down. They want me to keep going. So oh yeah, it's cliche, but like if you're blessed to have those relationships to have that support, if they were alive today, you know that. So it's like. 
I yeah. Feel. I think well, it's one thing that really, really like pushes me to what, what I remember if I think about my mom, that whole week that she was in the hospital, I remember like sleepless nights. Bro, I, I could not sleep. Like I, I, di- I didn't get any sleep, dude. You know, I was like really, really going through it. Like I didn't know what was going on. But I remember one time I went to the hospital, I was visiting her. And this is something I always remember forever. And this is literally her last words to me. And uh, I remember going to the hospital and um, my sister had just left because she had spent the night with her. So I'm like, okay, let me give me, you know, some time with her. You can go home, sleep or whatever. So I went to the hospital and um, I just remember talking to my mom, holding her hand and telling her, you know what, mom, like, I love you. And no matter what happens, just know I'm going to be okay. Just know I'm I'm gonna. You don't have to worry about me. I'm because I, I was her youngest. I am her youngest still, you know. So I told her like, don't worry. Like whatever happens, just know I wanna be okay and I love you. And what she replied back to me through the mask, the oxygen mask, I can hear. Her. She said, "I love you too." So I know she heard me. I know she heard me. Whatever I said, and maybe that's why she was ready to to let go because I know she was worried about me, you know. But uh, that that's that's what keeps me going for sure. That's amazing. I, I think the fact that she just said that as well, it's like, and she knows you're going to be okay. Yeah. And that is but the fact that you said that, of course, but it's like, that's it right there. It's like, it's, to have that, to have that, even though that last few minutes or those few words, that's amazing that you still take that with you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, shit. Well, so, uh, another question about it. Cause you have two older sisters. Yeah. So similar. I have two older sisters and I'm the youngest, the youngest in my family. Is this something you guys, have you guys been open about talking about? It? Obviously, I'm sure you have like reminiscing and stuff. Have you ever gone into depth with the conversations with your sisters? Surprisingly, no. That's not that surprising to be honest. Really? Yeah, I feel like. Uh, really? I mean, I, I, that's what's crazy. I mean, oh. I feel like I've heard it before. I, I, I don't know what I don't. Nothing. I, maybe I'm. Well, just if you li- don't mind me asking, how yeah. how did your, your your dad pass away? He died on September 11th. 9/11. Yeah, you know. He was it. there. Yeah, yeah, he was very oh. much there. He was in the towers. Wow. Yeah. So. Did you grow up in? In New York? I was born in Staten Island, raised in New Jersey. And then my dad worked in the towers in New York. Um, What did your dad do there? He was a stockbroker. Wow. Yeah. He was the one that flew the plane. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, guys. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't can't go more than seven seconds without saying something disturbing. I apologize for everyone listening. But (laughs) this is episode like 72. So if you just started listening, get used to it. If you've heard these episodes before, like it's not a surprise. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just you know. Adrian's a little goofball. That's why I looked over at him and started laughing. It yeah. looks like a tomato right now. I'm, a, I think I'm a tomato because <laughs> I'm like this tequila. He poured me like a half a gallon. Um, <laughs> no, no man, yo, it's uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Nothing surprising. Everyone deals with it differently. I just, I always just ask that question because I wonder wow. how many opportunities people get to discuss it because I feel like that's the big premise of this podcast. We've said a million times. Is just getting people to talk about it. Because at the end of the day, it's literally you're releasing energy, and then you're like you're letting it out. There's a reason for, when they say let it out, doesn't mean just it means it's in somewhere it's coming out. Like yeah. it, and that that verbalization. How, how old were you when that happened? I was twelve. Wow, I was twelve. Wow, yeah. Um, I actually, yeah, the last step, last episode, yeah, on Friday, I just dropped an episode uh, telling my story for the first I, time. I actually saw that a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just missed the nine eleven part. I think I did. I think I did. No, okay. well, you posted it on 9-11. Yeah, but I also, so I was just like, oh, okay. Some clips there. didn't specifically mention 9-11, but um, <laughs> 9-11, 9-11. Um, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, that happened. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I, I, I have a close, uh, so this is why we try, to, we try to lighten the mood here, guys. It's okay to laugh. Um, so, yeah, because I, I have a close relationship with my sisters. and because of this guy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, baby. I just, like I said, I cope with laughter. This is like, we got to laugh at this shit, people. I know it's it's in the moment. Sometimes you don't find the humor, but I promise you it's okay. It's good to laugh at these things. Um, and plus, I'm like 22 year, 21 years into it, so I've been through it all. Um, all right, what the fuck was I going to say? So my sisters. Yeah, I'm very close to my sisters. Are How, What's the age gap with your sisters, though? My oldest, seven and a half years. And my next, my middle sister, Gina, is about five and a half, seven years and five and a half. How old so are you? My, we don't have to put this, but how old are you? I was staying. Um, I'm 33. And so okay. there's, you know, so, so, so Gina is five and a half years older. Jacqueline's about seven. So different experiences. But we've, we've been pretty vocal about it. I still think we can even get more in depth. Like, 
we, we've shared moments and remembering things. I'm going to have the, I plan, I have to talk to him again, but I'm pretty sure they'd come on the podcast, I think. That'd be dope. So I'm not putting you guys on the spot, Gina and Jacqueline, but come on. Um, but down the podcast, yeah, <laughs> Gina and Jacqueline, come on, <laughs> and my mother, I get her on too. But it's, uh, I don't know, I, I think it's, it's interesting. We have, we, we spend so much time together and we do have these conversations, but I just don't think it's surprising that, you know, some people don't get into it. Obviously, you share space together, but I, I think it's a whole other experience to, and maybe I should do this, is just really sit down with your sisters. I'm not suggesting this, I'm just an idea. Like, I wonder how it would go to like, to really hear their perspective, how they dealt with it. Cause they may be dealing things, dealing with similar things. They may be dealing with things yeah. that are different and how you've experienced it might help them and well, vice versa. Well, to be fair, like my, I'm 25. My sister, my oldest sister is 42 and my other sister's 40. So there's a big, big age difference with that. And they have their kids and stuff. And that's another thing too. Like when my mom passed away, I had this, I think anger, right? Anger is one of the grief process uh, steps too, right? Yeah. I think so. Pretty so sure. I had like this, just animosity towards them. Like, you know, I just thought about it. Like my mom would never see me get married. She'll never see me have kids. She'll never meet my wife. You know what I'm saying? It's like all these things came in my head. I'm like, my sister has her kids, her wife, her family, all that, you know? And I, I don't think we have talked about it yet, but. I'm not, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I'm just, I'm just you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, like I, I just had my, my own opinions, you know, like my sure. sister, my older sister's very reserved, very like closed off, no emotions. And I live with her, you know? Yeah. So it's really like after she passed away, it was really hard to like navigate how I felt. Cause I wanted to talk to her cause she's, all, she's my sister. She was there, you know, but she didn't want to talk about it. So I kind of just had to go through it on my own. You know, I have my friends and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but like truly I didn't feel like anybody really understood how I felt and grief. That's why grief is a weird thing. And I actually asked people on my Instagram yesterday, I did a poll and I said, what does grief mean to you? Mm. Because I knew I was coming here and people had a bunch of different answers. Somebody said like, what grief means to me is never being the same way ever again, or uh, feeling sad, distraught, but accepting it. And like just all these different perspectives. And I was like, wow, like, this, I should ask this a long time ago. This is some really good insight, you know? I have a podcast talking about death. I haven't asked that question. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, like, it's, it's just, I, I, everyone has like, different experiences with it. And, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a confusing thing. It's That's a confusing for sure. thing. And, and, and when you said, like, I, I feel like no one understands or no, what, what you're feeling. And I, I agree. I think you'd even, even when you have people in your family going through the same thing, you still don't, you can relate and, but you never, you never know what anyone feels. Mm -hmm. You can have the same exact experience, same time, same age, same person. But like you, everyone still feels different. You never know what someone else feels because you're not them. So mm -hmm. it's like you're never going to totally feel understood. But I think you can feel comfort in knowing that there's you're not alone in yeah. feeling something. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like I don't know. Like, I don't know. Is, is is being understood important to you in regards to like what your your pain is? Yes and no. Just because I know like the majority of my friends and family still have like their, their loved ones, like their, their, their mom, their dad. And not to say that losing a grandma or whatever isn't, isn't significant as a parent, it, it all falls in the same table. But, um, at least for me, my circle, like for sure, like I, I met a couple people for sure that has had their dad pass away or their mom. And I always reach out, always reach out. Cause I, I know that pain, you know, but it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. And I'm still, as 25, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to, you know, navigate my life without my, there's sometimes where like, I have a question. I'm like, you know who would know this? My mom. Mm. And I just have to like Google it or like figure it out or something, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know. There's just certain things I'm just like, damn, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think sometimes you gotta, we gotta like take it easy on ourselves because we try to figure out so much. And once again, I think it goes back just looking up and laughing. It's like, I don't fucking know. But it's like sometimes with goals in life when you go after whatever you want to see whether it's music this that it's like you don't you just got to know where you're going and just trust that you're going to figure it out along the way and not always obsess about how I'm going to do it yeah obviously you want to plan and figure and like itemize shit like I'm not saying don't have a plan but if you don't have the answer right now just I think all you can do is trust that I'm going to figure like you said you told your mom I'm going to be okay yeah even though I'm sure when you said that you're like, I don't know, fuck, I'm going to be okay yeah. but you just know you're going to be okay so it's mm -hmm. like seeing the end goal it's like driving through the fog you're driving through the fog and all you can see is maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 feet ahead of you, but you know where you're going with the car, but you're only taking it 10, 20, 30, 40. Baby feet. steps. Baby you're steps. taking those steps, but just have the faith that you're going to, you're going to fucking figure it out one way or another. And it sucks right now, but 
hey, baby, this is life. I don't, I don't know what else to say. And it sucks. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, if you ask me what grief is, I think it sucks. Um, how, yeah. how did you feel at the age of 12? I don't fucking know. I was like, I was. Like, you're I, so young, bro. You're so young. Like, yeah. You're still learning. There's so much. I, I mean, you have to check out my, uh, uh, I don't want to bore people with my 9-11 story again. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot I didn't remember. So it, it's like, it's just a lot of this shit affected me later growing up as a man and making realizations and and thinking about things. So it's, I think it's important to really think about things, but it's also important not to get too deep sometimes. Mm. I don't know. Just find a way out of it. But yeah, I don't know, man, you're uh, you're gonna you're still gonna it's gonna stay with you forever. But you know, I think you got to kind of like chip at the stone a little bit, and over time, as long as you're working on it, it's gonna get better. Yeah, and just contemplate, do your thing. I think you're you seems like you have the the right head on your shoulders. You're gonna be battles along the way. You're probably gonna de- take detours you don't want to take, but whatever. Just gotta come back on the road. Yeah. Um, but listen, I appreciate you being here. I don't know if there's anything else. Like a, it's a it's a weird transition to be like, do you have anything you want to drop out your music or whatever? But feel free to plug yourself or whatever. If you have any last words that you want to get out there or not at all, yeah, um, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, you can follow me at Eric G A I R I C K G with three E's on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Instagram, all that. Um, yeah, if anybody's going through you know a tough time, whether if it's losing a loved one, breakup, whatever. Believe me, I've been through it. So feel free to reach out, you know, slide in the DM, shoot me a DM. And I'm always open to talk to to people that are feeling any type of way, sadness, depression, anxiety. Believe me, I go through it every day. I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, we're all human at the end of the day, but feel free to reach out. New song dropping soon. Excuses featuring Baby Bea should be dropping by the time this comes out. Maybe the music video will be out. Just check out the Instagram. But Thank you for having me, bro. I really appreciate it. Like, for real, for real. Like, thank you. This was a treat. And uh, I will I'll cherish this forever. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, it's good to share the space with you. And uh, I might have to buy your style and ask people what they think of grief. That's fantastic. <laughs> I also said fantastic way too many times, guys. So maybe I'll edit out the fantastic. Fantastic, 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 <laughs> fantastic. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in, Eric G. And uh, I appreciate you guys, as always. Another episode of Dead Talks. We out. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Dead Talks. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That'll give you updates as to when we post a new video, more episodes, and more content in general. We are streaming on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and all that. And also find us on Instagram at Dead Talks Podcast or www.deadtalks.net. Thank you so much.